Good afternoon. It's Jenny here at Gemini Crafts, based in Brackley in Northamptonshire in the UK. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon here and I thought I'd visit two stamp sets in one, both of whom are retiring as of next week. And there isn't um, a direct alternative coming out. Hi Tracy and hi Molly. Hi Scylla. So these two stamp sets uh, both work together. They also work completely independently. So you can have one or the other. Or if you love vases and flowers then you could have both. So this one is called Varied Vases, and this one is Vibrant Vases. I'll move that a little bit further over, hopefully you can see that. And they have a matching punch. This punch here is the Vase Builder Punch. And as you can see, hopefully in the light, it actually punches out three different vases. A little flower, which is like a tulip head, and then... A leaf. Now this vase punch is going through so you'll see that in the new catalogue. Hi Alexis, hi Claire. Um, but both of these stamp sets are retiring. Now these are great for quick and simple birthday cards, get well cards, thinking of you cards, just because cards, um, could be wedding, could be anniversary, basically anything where you might send flowers in real life. Obviously they go nicely if you are sending flowers. So I'm going to be using um, a bit of each of these, but um, either stamp set will work. This one, Varied Vases, has 34 different stamps and that is £24. The Vibrant Vases has less, it has 21 stamps, and that one is £16. The vase shape in both instances is exactly the same shape because they match the punch. So there's so much you can do with these. Um, so I'm going to make a, a couple of quick simple cards and then show you some stepped up versions. So I hope that's useful to you. So, first of all, before we even do any stamping, if you literally just want some vases, then all you need to do is either find some patterned paper, or, oh, I've been here before, look, <laughs> or some um, plain card, whatever you want. I've just got three colours there, which, funnily enough, are the retiring in colours. Um, and all I'm going to do is punch out three lots of vases. Now you could stamp these out first and um, punch them. Or you can literally just punch and go. I'm punching them all together. So the nice thing about this is you get all of these images in one punch. Okay, obviously if you've got stripes... Just work out where you want the stripes to appear. And so that will give us some ready-to-go vases. So those are the blue dotty ones. This is the striper ones. Now these papers all have um, patterns on either side. So if you wanted to keep them the same colour, hi Carol, then you could do that. Or you could swap them around. So Carol and Claire, you'll be pleased to hear that your packs are on their way to you. And I've been recording all morning, so I'm a bit worded out, I think. So we've got various different vases that we can use. These are leaves, or they can be leaves, so you can punch the most out plainly. And then you've got these cute little flowers. Hi Brenda. So we've got spotty flowers here, one, two, 
and three there we go so if you wanted to make a really quick and easy card all you need to do is punch some of those out and add some flower stalks now if you've got a flower punch you could literally just punch some flower heads out and um, and layer those up so I'm going to I'm just going to mix and match some of these so I'm just going to take one two let's take one of each shall we three now I'm going to have I want the yellow dotty to be that one because it's I want it a bit <laughs> oh there we go one two and then I have that in the green dotty stripey whatever <laughs> so really easily what you can do is literally place these down and stamp some flowers coming out of the vase so I'll show you how easy that is to do now both of these sets have different flowers in so this set here has these pansy flowers so you can stamp that you could color them in or you could use the infill it has these little um, sort of daisy type flowers with an infill it also has some of the leaves and that tiny little tulip and on this set here you've got this lovely orchid with an infill you've got these um, little sets of um, it's almost like Queen Anne lace um, a poppy style and then a little floral style so lots of honestly so many variations that you could use all you need to be aware of is that if you are using this orchid for example if I just grab that what you wouldn't want to do is put the orchid sort of low down in here because then you've got no space for a flower above there so what I tend to do if I'm using the orchid is I tend to have the orchid on the right hand side and then you can put something else in its place if that makes any sense so what I'm going to do is stamp a, a mixture of flowers and then you can see how those go together um, so let's have the orchid and the poppies which is this sort of poppy design and I'll have um, this one here so those are all quite um, upright you could obviously if you're doing a lot of these pop these in the stamparatus and do it that way but I'm literally just going to stamp them as is so what I'm going to do is those are the three I'm going to use and just for the sake of working out where they're going to go um, doesn't really matter which shape I have I'm just going to put three like that and then literally just stamp over them and the only reason I was stamping over there is so that I don't need to mark it out where they are so it's a little bit lazy but does the job so I've got memento black ink but you could honestly use um, a green ink you could use a brown ink so I'm just inking this one up it's a bit breezy so I'm hoping it's not going to blow everything everywhere okay so that's my rough layout and I'm just literally going to stamp this one here <laughs> not lazy shortcut thank you <laughs> and I can still turn that round and use it on the other side anyway thank you Carol that's so kind of you to say that <laughs> let's have the poppies as the next one I'm just inking that off the camera, I'm sorry. Like so, let's have those a little bit higher. So you could just stamp these and pop the vases on after, but I, know, I like to know roughly where the spacing is. 
that's why I've done it that way but there's so many different things you can do with these these are always really popular at coffee and card because you can do lots of different things with them I'm running out of space here a little bit so because I've been recording all morning for my class in a box you should see the debris behind me this might look nice and clean here <laughs> just don't look in the other direction folks okay so now I can pop my vases down okay and if I wanted to I could use um, a line to get those nice and straight you could stamp this little border here or you could use a piece of washi tape if you've got some washi tape to hand which you could either then leave on your card or you could just remove so you're using it like a masking tape if I can find the end of this I'm going to use this just because I want to keep it nice and straight really hello Carol so all I'm going to do I think I might actually pop that along the bottom. Looks quite pretty. That wasn't my original intention. Let me just. I'm just going to use a little bit because it's got a little dip in it there. I hope you're well, Carol. Working hard. So you could leave a little gap or you could have it right the way along the bottom, whichever you prefer. It's not very straight. I'm going to reseat that a little bit. There we go. So I am actually going to just wrap this around and use that to make it look like a, a table or something. And then these. Can't remember which way around I had it now. Oh no, that was first, wasn't it? About let me see. It's that. That. And that. So I want to sit that on there. I'm actually going to just trim the bottom of that vase down very slightly. Okay, so those are vases. So literally, I've just punched those out. <laughs> well done, Carol. <laughs> punched out those shapes. So all I'm going to do is stick those down and colour in the design and add a little sentiment. So you could leave this down there or you could remove it entirely up to you. I'm going to pop those on with some dimensionals in a second. And I'm just going to colour those in really quickly just with some blends pens. Um, I've got a bit of yellow so I can use some yellow and I'll just match the colours to the vases you could use the infill stamp I think if you were doing one or two then I would just manually colour them in but if you wanted to do a whole set so invitations or thank yous then I would set that up on the Stamparatus, set the infills on the Stamparatus, and then just literally stamp twice, and you'd have you could have the vases, those, and the infills three lots of stamping, and you'd be done. Um, let's add what have I got there? Call me Clover. Probably haven't got that pen to hand. Um, let's just use this one shaded spruce it's not really the right color for an for an orchid but hey ho you could do these obviously in multi colors just have a light Pink and then a deeper pink in the centre if you wanted. Two, three, like that. 
and then this one I've got a bit of blue I'm just going to use some pale blue for some pool party because it's here So there we go, as much or as little colouring in as you would like. I'm going to pop these vases back with some dimensionals. So I'm going to have one in the middle. Just trim that edge down. These are my off cuts. Of dimensionals and this one so I'm literally going to pop that on there I think I wanted that spotty side up, didn't I? Never mind. We'll have stripey. It's another stunning day here today. Two. And three. That's my blue. There we have it. So if you didn't like the masking tape there, the washi tape, you could just remove that if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to leave it on because I think it sort of just finished this, finishes that off. And then you could add a sentiment to that and then mount that onto a card. So I've got um, a just for you that would work. Or a hello or a thanks. Let me just see if just for you will fit in. Just for you is quite a nice sentiment because it can mean so many different things, can't it? I really want to put it here on the right hand side, but I'm going to put it up there. <laughs> I'm being really indecisive, aren't I? onto a block I could use a different sentiment the nice thing about this is you get so many sentiments so with varied vases you get thanks hello birthday wishes hope your day blooms with happiness you're simply the best and then vibrant vases comes with celebrate every tiny victory just for you you're loved always and thanks for understanding so some nice um, sentiments for that. I am just going to use Memento Black as it is here. So just making sure that's nicely inked. And let's pop that in there. There we go. Hi Jo, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Now I've got some layers, and I'm going to pop these on some note cards. So I've got some assorted colours of um, layers which I've got pre-cut. And that happens to be Call Me Clover. So I could pick that up for the green. Or I have daffodil this is actually pineapple but let's see if that looks any better hi Linda um, I've got navy I've also got the retiring blue let's try that one as well too much choice What do we think? Any preferences? 
blue, green, yellow. I quite like the yellow because it picks out the yellow from there. I will stick with the yellow. So that is a really quick, oh blue, Brenda says blue, to see if anybody else thinks a different colour to the one I've chosen. So this is a really quick and easy card, because all I did was punch the three vases. I did choose three different colours of paper, but you could punch them all out in one. And the nice thing about doing that is that you've then got another three here, and then another three here. So you could easily make three cards out of, you know, those three lots of punches. So this says yellow or blue. Hmm. Perhaps I'll do blue. Ta -da! I'll do blue. Let's go for it. Okay, so I'm just going to put some wet glue on the back of that. Also my scribble of glue. Pop that onto the blueberry bushel layer. Like so. And then that is going to go onto my white note card which I've tucked away under here and obviously it has a matching envelope as well let's fold that in half use my bone folder like so and pop that layer onto that. So a nice crisp card. You could stamp some of the vases inside if you wished as well. I might do that. So this is the front layer. Like so. Oh yes, the um, the glue would hold. The only one that that would ever be in any doubt is the snail. If you allowed it to sit in the light for a long time, the snail could dry up. But if the cards were sealed, um, this is permanent. So as soon as it's once it's down and dried, it's not moving. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That is. A mixture of well that's actually all from the varied vases stamp set here so with these vases you get an outline you get an infill and you get a pattern so you can use either of those you could do a mixture so you could have the patterned one an open one and a, a colored one okay so any combination you could stamp the open one with the flower and then use the blends pen to put in some water. Okay. So what I'm going to show you now is a, a variation of that, but stepped up a little bit with some masking. I'm going to use a combination of sets for this. So let me get the stamparatus out. Day. Okay, remove that. So I hope you can see that stamparatus in full or just about. So what I'm going to do is pick up another piece of card. So this is the same size to fit on my note card. I'm just going to pop it on here. I'm using these guidelines 
but actually I'm just going to pop it up into that little corner so this is for that I've written on for a square card and you can wipe these off later on these are um, I've written these in permanent pen but you can wipe those off just use an alcohol swab I'm just going to pop that on there I've got dirty fingers so I'm going to try another one there we go so what I'm going to do for this one is layer up some stamps and then put some of the vases in between with a bit of masking so I'm using the bottom edge of the card as my base this time and I've got one there I hope I've swapped those around a bit more otherwise they're a bit boring aren't they one here and one here so I've got three vases in a line and I'm just using the bottom of the stamp it may not be exactly accurate but it will be good enough okay I'm going to pick those up with that let's take these off I'm going to use those in a minute okay so I'll just reseat that back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp those first in black because these are going to be my outline vases that I'm going to put some water into I could also put some punch layers on top afterwards if I wanted to so those are my three vases going in there like so okay what I'm now going to do is pop a post-it note down because I want to mask these off and put some vases behind it so I'm hoping this will fit which it does so I'm just going to pop a post-it note on there hello Marion I'm re-inking the vases up sorry you can't see that particularly well can you we tuck that piece of paper underneath so there we go. So these are my three stamps that I've just stamped underneath. I'm going to pop that down again. And that's going to create my three masks. Okay. Just going to whip that off and cut those out. Because what I want to do is put two vases um, tucked in behind. So I'm just going to cut these out manually just inside up here now you could um, actually attach a post-it note to a piece of card and punch these out that would be an alternative I hope you're keeping well Marion your punch box is Oh, that's okay, Maretta. Your punch box kit is on its way if it's not already with you, Marion. There we go. Trim that top. Awesome. Ah, oh, now I'm hoping some of you can help me, or one of you can help me, because a couple of weeks ago, or even even only last week possibly I demonstrated the tea together stamp set with the framelits and the stamp set was was reduced to 12 pounds and the framelits I believe were eight pounds so the whole thing was 20 pounds which is the same price as the original stamp set because it's retiring and somebody ordered a set from me which I've ordered and received and they paid me for it but I have no idea who it was so if it was you and you're waiting for a tea together stamp set and punch and dies do let me know it wasn't on email because I've been through all my emails so it must have been on messenger or possibly somebody commenting on my Facebook so I need to go and have a look at that 
Okay, so I'm putting these masks on here so that I can stamp some vases behind. So this is to cover them over. This is called a mask. So when we stamp behind them, it'll look like they're actually behind them. And I just need to find those stamps that I've just taken off. Here they are. So what I'm going to do is um, just make sure they're clean to start with. So I'm going to have one here and I'm going to have it slightly up to make it look like it's further back. And this is the pretty design one. And do the same with this one. Um, I've been looking for that and because I've had lots of, because it was £20 and I've had lots of payments for class in the box, they were all £20. <laughs> So it's a bit, if it's an odd amount, it would be a lot easier to find. So, I will, I think it's probably on the Facebook video. So, I've just turned that over, and now I can pick those vases up. But thank you, Joe. Oh, excellent, Marion, that is good. All right, let me just reseat that. This is where using the grid lines is so useful. Okay, so those are my three vases that are covered up. And these are the two vases that are going to go behind them. I've got those in the way a little bit, but you'll be able to see the finished effect shortly. So if you wanted to do a whole set of these, I would leave these on the Stamparatus ready. And then all you've got to do, because you've got the masks ready, is stamp all of this lot, put the masks on and then stamp the other ones. So let me just push that through there. Okay, so now when I peel these away, we've got our clear vases in the front. Now, there's nothing to stop you popping one or two or just one of those on there if you wanted to. Okay. Or a combination. Like so. But what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of colouring in and then add some flowers to that. Just to show you. Hello, Pauline. Oh, hello, Jeanette. It's funny how people turn up in in groups together. <laughs> it's almost like they've also been together and then joined in. I know that's not really the case. So these, <laughs> that's okay Jeanette, these are the vases that I've just stamped using the masking technique. So what I'm going to do is colour in the ones at the back. Oh hi Julia. And then just put some water in the ones in the front to make it look like they're clear clear glass ones. So um, these have got leaves on so I'm going to do those in a pale green. What have I got here? Light old olive. That will do the job. So I'm just going to pop over that using the light over the main body of it and then I'm just going to go in with the, with the darker old olive for the leaves. So I will be sorry to see these sets go because they're just versatile for quick and easy cards. Like so. That one. Let's do that one in Oop. daffodil. Only really because of the colours that I've got here. The ready. So this is dark daffodil delight. So I'm just coming in from the edges. Like so. Grab 
lighter daffodil if I can find one. Dark, dark, dark. <laughs> and light. Finally. Nice to see you, um, Julia. So just bringing that bit of colour in either side, like so. And then just going to get a darker green for those leaves. This is dark old olive, so that is perfect. I could leave those um, white if I wanted to, to be honest. Just want a bit of interest, really. so so if you don't like colouring in then my recommendation is buy the punch because then you can punch all of the vases out you don't have to do any colouring in you can um, punch out the little tulips and use those there we go so those are my two vases um, sit sitting behind and now I'm just going to do the water level. So I've got a light pool party. I'm hoping a dark pool party. So I'm just going to use the dark one. Just come in for the edges. So again, that um, brushing motion, so it's coming in from each edge. Feathering, that's the sort of word I wanted. Like so. And you get a bit more natural shade. And then this one is going to have a little bit more water. And then So I don't tend to draw a line around the edge. And this one's going to have a little bit less. But as I say, you could just punch and pop them on top if you wanted. You could stamp and punch as well if you wanted the outline rather than just the plain bars without any markings on it. Go. Okay. Just going to use the light one to fill that in. And then we'll add some flowers. So you get quite a different look. So this is the one here that I did earlier, just literally stamping. And this is one where you're building up with a little bit more um, skill in terms of masking and technique work. Okay, I'm just going to use the fine tip of the lighter one to go over that little edge there blend in like so and the same here So just showing a little bit of light there on the light, on one side. If you wanted to, you could just scribble right the way over. So those are our vases. And now we can just add a selection of flowers to those. So with the punch, you do actually have these little tulip heads. So I could, if I wanted, just literally pop some tulips in using um, a line for the stalk you could also add these leaves in here hello Valerie so lots of combinations 
or you could stamp the images. So what I'm going to do is stamp here so that you can actually see the stalks in the vase. And I'm going to use some of those again. I hope you're well, Valerie. Lovely to see you. So we're using our fun vase sets, both of which are retiring. So let's have... I'm going to have that one in there because it's sort of pointing off to the left-hand side. So I don't lose any space. So I'm just going to ink that up. I would probably use early espresso ink rather than black memento. Let's have that like so. That's it. So you can see see where the stalk is in the vase and luckily it's in the water. <laughs> I didn't think of that when I put it down actually but obviously if it was out of water you could fill up some water if you wanted to um, let's see I might put um, some of these little ones here that would fit in wouldn't it like so I might put that one in there actually and then put a little tulip or something in that one so you can just you know play around and add bits and pieces in if you didn't want the stalks to show if you wanted to color that in then you just mask that off so you could just literally pop that mask back on and then stamp but for these ones because I've got the water I want them to show through. Oops, missed the very corner of that. I can just see I've got it left on the stamp. So I'm just going to look through. It's quite difficult with the camera in the way, but I'm going to give it a go. So I haven't re-inked it. Okay, very slight amount of duplication, but I think I'll get away with that, especially if I do it in a dark colour. Um, and then let's see what we can pop on these ones here. Let me find my two stamp sets. So we've obviously got the orchid we can put in. Got these little flowers here and some stalks so let's pop a stalk a stalk in actually thinking Popping that green one in there. Actually. It's a solid one. And a little sort of daisy. Let's find a small block for that. So when you are working with these small stamps, you want a block that is bigger than the stamp but not so much bigger that you're going to really rock it around. So what I'm going to do is pop that little bit of greenery in. And I think I have, I have pear pizzazz to hand. So basically you can do your own flower arranging. <laughs> Without um, without any mess, hopefully, she says. Which way do I want this to go? I shouldn't think about it too much, should I, really? Gotta have that. 
and the flat like so and pop a um, do I need to pop that's how I'll just do that all I'll do that all leaves actually I think that would work like so Not that we'd, you would really just have leaves in a vase, would you? But hey ho. Okay. Now, I need to have something small in there. So maybe that's where I'm going to put my little um, flower like that. Let's find the black. So I'm going to colour this one in. So, put that there, and I might put the little tulip, let's see what I've got, I've got a yellow tulip to hand, or have I lost it, there it is. The wrong yellow really isn't it okay I'm going to come back to that one I'm going to color this one in that's um, I'm just going to use really the colors that are at hand so I'm going to have a light and a dark blue for this one I'm going to use a darker color here because I want to hide that little bit of doubling up go Now I've got two choices. I can either mask off that little area or I can use a pen just to draw that line of the stalk in. I think I'm going to use a pen. And let's have a little practice on a piece of scrap here. So I'm literally just going to do that sort of thing. Very technical. <laughs> so technical it started and stopped there we go <laughs> hey right let's colour these in in a bit more detail it's just going to go for a darker colour for those I've got a nice deep which raspberry or oh, no blackberry bliss that's perfect So, okay. Just going to switch to the finer point for this little area here. Of course I've coloured these vases different colours but you could have them all in the same shades you know so all in blue and white for example that would look nice like so I think these are going to be yellow actually and I'll have something different in my yellow vase Oh, they should be red if they're poppies. Never mind. There we go. Voila. So you can see quite the difference between this one here 
and this one quite a bit more work involved if only in terms of colouring in <laughs> even if nothing else um, so I might find the little tulip stamp because I want it all to be stamped I've decided so the tulip stamp has an outline and an infill there's the outline I might just use that and again just draw in its line there let me pop it on a small block oh yes thank you California poppies you're quite right and there's another poppy as well that can be um, yellow different colours there we go so I've just got my single tulip here trying to get it roughly ahead in line could have it at an angle could have multiple tulips I'm going to put it straight straightish and I'm going to make that a red oh might you a purple tulip why not as it goes with this here so this is a dark purple posy so it's a sort of pink purple it does dry slightly lighter because it does look pink at the moment but as it dries the alcohol will disappear and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mask the top of that vase off to do my line just to make it look a bit more accurate you will stick dumb voila grab my pen and what I'm going to do is draw it that way down from there to the tulip there we go I could add a bit of leaf actually to that tulip Yeah, I am going to just to soften it a little. So let's pop that back on like so. And I'm just going to have a little bit of leaf there. Find my green ink again, which was right in front of me under here. <laughs> I bet you're going, it's there on the left of you. So, let's grab that. I've got that masked off, so it doesn't matter if I start sort of in the middle of there. Like so. There we go. Do I need a flower coming out of that one? That is the question. Or shall I leave it just with the, the greenery? Right, I'll leave it for the minute. If anybody says I should put something in it, I might do that. Right. Oh, I could put the... Um, I haven't used the orchid, have I? But it's not really the right leaves for an orchid, is it? Um, find the orchid now. Da, da, da. I buried it underneath here, I think. I have indeed. Yeah, I don't think it looks right in that. I'm going to leave that as it is. Less is more. 
So now I'm going to add a sentiment to that. So just for you, would that work there on the right hand side, I think, further up. So let us add that. And I might add that. in a colour just to make it contrast a little bit quite tempted to go for a darker oh do you Molly <laughs> oh good do you think I should put it in so I could mask it off and have it just coming out of the top but I quite like the space that that leaves so sorry Right, let's use, I'm actually going to use um, a nice deep red Black Blue Bliss or something for that sentiment. I'm going to use the same one, just for you. It's a really versatile sentiment, that, because it can be for anything. Let's find a piece of scrap that I practiced on. So there we go. Perfect. And then if I can find Blackberry Bliss backing, that will work nicely. There we go, just for you. So a little bit more stepped up, but I really I do really like the effect of that. If you've got the time to do it. Um, let's see what I've got. So I have black. I was hoping I might have Blackberry Bliss. I don't think I have. Oh, I do. There we go. That's my winning one. Then it will pick up the colour of that sentiment nicely. Gosh, I can't believe it's coming up to four o'clock already. Goodness me, where does the time go? Okay, so I'm going to pop that onto my Blackberry Bliss layer. I'm just going to use some snail, but you could use your glue of preference, obviously. And I might add a few gems to this one as well. So just centering that in my panel. So the white layer is three inches by four and a half. The Black Breed Bliss layer is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then the base card, which comes from our note cards and envelopes, is three and a half by five. So I've got basically a half inch um, set of increments so that will go on to there so really nice crisp and clean image some glue and a bit of bling and they're done going to turn it over and score it on the reverse to get a nice crisp edge and if you can score it on the back then you're less likely to make a mess of the front if you've got any marks on your bone folder or fingers um, let me find my bling which is equally buried behind me and see what I've got so I have got some purples there I think the green might work actually because the green will pick up the green of that or some champagne coloured ones I think either of those would do orange sequins maybe not So, 
I'm just going to use my plain ones. What I could do is use my Blackberry Bliss pen to make these darker. If I have it to hand, do you see? I've got light Blackberry Bliss. Let me see if it will. Yeah. That's working. So if you can see that. So just take your blends pen. It'll only work with a blends pen. If you have a Sharpie, one of those permanent markers, then you can use those. You won't be able to do this with ink or with a stamp and write marker because it will just literally wipe off. You need something that is permanent. There we go. Oh, I've got two here, look. Sometimes if you've only got a light colour pen, go back in a few times and make it a little bit darker. There's my dark blackberry bliss, because I used it, didn't I? So let's make this a little bit darker. Now these were champagne coloured to start with, so you will get a different effect depending on what colour the gems are to begin with. Okay, so let's pick some of those up. Um, so I could do a line of three down here to balance it, or I could just dot them around. And my favourite is to just dot them around, because then you don't have to worry about getting them in a line. Are you liking that idea? <laughs> You're beginning to know me, folks. <laughs> keep it simple okay so there we are there's my two cards so this one literally punch out the shapes use some colored paper you can stamp the flowers or use some punched flower shapes if you've already got them I've used some washi tape actually as a base layer which you could leave on or you could remove and that's just to get these um, straight and then this one here a little bit more stepped up in terms of masking so I stamped the three open vases first I covered them over with the masks stamped the two vases behind and then colored those in you could oh my battery's just gone <laughs> so I'm gonna round up really quickly <laughs> thank you everybody